Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we have the brand new Super Battleship, French Super Battleship, the Patry, in port to review for you guys today. Uh, the ship is currently available through the tech line, the French Battleship tech line, or through acquiring, I believe, five other tier 10 ships. You can purchase this massive battleship for. 57 million credits base, or 40, what was it, I think it was 48 million with the current sale going on, and of course if you have uh, clan structures and such, you can get it for a little bit cheaper than that. So she was recently recently released with update 11.9. I didn't get to her right away because I was doing a lot of stuff with the updates, with submarines and uh, I-56 coming out, and that actually turning out to be a pretty fun boat to play and then of course with um the Bergon finally becoming available to me after i finished the dockyard so been a little bit busy but now we are getting around to looking at the patri and like the title states um i'm not 100 percent sure how great this ship is going to be essentially from what i've seen it's a republic with another turret welded on to the back well, actually i guess it's technically welded onto the front um but her armor just it mmm I know it's French, and I know it's, you know, normal for the French line, but I have my reservations about that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this ship in port. No modules have been applied, nor commander skills equipped. And of course, I haven't played any games of the ship just yet. In fact, I used to be at 177 million credits, but now we are not there anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this ship. So, uh, if you are wondering the economic bonus for this ship, since it's a super ship, there is no financial gain to it. Just gives you a boost to your ship XP and your commander XP and your free XP. And then I am running the third tier of the credit booster because I do wish to make some profit off of this thing. Uh, if you're wondering why I do run the other boosters on these ships, it's because for you know purposes of, purposes of acquiring ships and retraining commanders and such, I like to farm um, free XP and commander XP any chance I get, so that's why I have all that equipped on this ship. Normally, if you're just running an economic boost, just worry about running the credits one. Alright, um, this is the camo that you do pay 200 dubs for. It's super simple. Um, it's kind of funny with a lot of these premium ships, or I guess perma camels in general, since the commander rework, they've kind of become pretty lackluster. I'm not sure if this is just a, a French thing, because this ship was designed, what, 1957? I'm not sure if it's just a thing in the 50s for the French to paint all the ships black and white. I, mean, I guess it makes sense, you know, that obscures the hull against the water, and then the white kind of hides the superstructure against the background. But, I don't know, they've just kind of gotten, gotten kind of bland. Alright, so let's look at the armor now. Um, and this is my big reservation about the ship. Look at this, this is all 32. 32 nose, upper belts 32, torpedo uh, bulges 32, 32 stern, 32 stern deck, 32 mid deck. 32 bow deck. It's just all 32. There's so many AC shells that are just going to poke this and get pin damage because, well, it's all coded in 32. Again, I know it's very French and everything, but let's take a look at everything else, see if it makes up for it. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty French battleship underneath that 32 uh, millimeter slat outside. You do have this turtle back armor, 420 millimeters thick. That's kind of nice. Uh, then the Citadel which is behind that is just below the waterline. So yeah, you do have a nice chunky sit, um, Citadel, not Citadel, uh, total back slat right there. And it is behind 32 millimeters of torpedo bulges, so you get the kind of that, you know, trademark French spaced armor. So that means, like, against AP, you're just going to do the, the, the trolley French thing where sometimes... It'll go in, you know, flat on, but because, you know, it's 32 millimeters of armor, then you have that space before the the Citadel, you know, you'll probably get some, like, pins that do, like, two damage or something like that, or, or non-pins or shatters or torpedo protection hits, where it barely does any damage. But then, you know, you're going to get hit from a weird angle, then it might just arm and Citadel the ship. French space armor is like that. All right. Tribility has 108,900 HP, which... Is a lot, but again, hmm, easily farmable ship. Twenty-nine percent torpedo damage reduction. That's such a low, a low threshold for a super ship. What's the handovers at? I think the handovers is similar to that. And the Germans have terrible torpedo protection. Oh, I, I don't have the handover actually, because I, even I have my limitations when it comes to to what I can buy with credits. 
So, Hanover, what, what's yours at? Surely yours isn't much worse. 30%! The Hanover has better torque protection than the um, Potri. That is funny. That is funny. Alright, main battery guns. You get 12 of the 431 17 and a half inch guns. These are the same guns that you will find on the Republic. They have a 30 second one, uh, reload time, which is pretty nice for 12 guns, especially 12 17 inch guns. Um, 180 time in 36 seconds, maximum dispersion, 327 meters, at 26.6 kilometers, so that's still kind of bad. But, with that range, though, you could easily slap a real module in here and make up for that. Alright, HEA has a 48% chance of causing a fire on the target, that's really good. That's really good for 12 guns with a 30 second base reload time. Uh, 6300 maximum HE damage, 72 millimeters of armor penetration, and they come out the tubes at 840 meters a second. AP does 14,500, and those come out the tubes at 840 meters a second. I do believe they are just the Republic guns. Let me just double check here. Real quick, 431, yep, 4150 MLE, 1940. Uh, 431 uh, AP OP FK and 431. Yep. Okay. So it, it's the Republic's guns and the, the Republic shells. So these are some good shells. These are, are some good sh uh, guns if they do hit and connect. Which, given that we have 12 of these bad boys now, probably will work quite well. But we'll see when we get into battle. Uh, secondary, she has 8x2 of the 100mm secondary gun. So 16 of these things. 1.5 second reload time. 8.3 km maximum range. Uh, 1400 maximum shell damage, 6% fire chance, 17 millimeters of armor pin. That's te terrible. And then you get uh, 3 by 3 of the 152s. These do, well, these are loaded in 8 seconds, maximum range 8.3 kilometers, maximum damage 2200, 12% fire chance, 25 millimeters of HE pin, and 870 meters a second is their initial shell velocity. Yeah, so this ship at one point in time, it had a battle. W what was it called? Special firing order or whatever. That would magically quadruple the penetration of the HE shells. Which would mean then that for a brief period of time, these 100mm secondary guns could pin like over 55mm of armor. Which was kind of dumb. <laughs> but that has been removed. So, yeah. A ring of 87, you get 16... Come on, camera. 16 of these um, 57 millimeter dual guns and then the 1600 millimeters are dual purpose along with the 152s as well she has a base a rating a rating of 87 uh, maneuverability maximum speed of 31 knots base a 1090 meter turning circle and a 19.6 second rudder shift time consumption of 17.3 kilometers yeah i figured i mean you, you got the the bastille bolted to the deck here it's not really hiding from much, is it? Alright, for her consumables, she gets engine boost, which is a 15% engine boost for 120 seconds. You get four heals base that reheal 544 HP per second, active for 28 seconds, reloads in 80 seconds, and a slightly shorter damage con. This one runs for 15 seconds instead of 16 like most battle ships. If you notice, there's no special firing order, or special combat order, or whatever they call them, the gimmicks that these super ships get. She doesn't have one. They removed it. They removed that quadrupling of the HE pins, and they didn't replace it with anything. So this is just, again, a Republic with another gun strapped to the deck in the firepower department. But we shall see how she plays. I'm going to go ahead and throw a commander module build on here. I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, guys. So for the commander, I do have Jean on here, and he does have the improved adrenaline rush skill. That's why I got him on here. So we went with primitive maintenance, grease the gears so our turrets are moving a little bit faster, adrenaline rush, and again, Jean has the improved adrenaline rush, so this does um, a little bit more, I think it's what the normal is, to, let me find, the normal adrenaline rush, what, just point 0.2, yeah, point 0.2, and Jean gets point 0.25 from um, his special skill, so a little bit faster adrenaline rush, so that's better. Basic up survivability to keep our main battery guns in the fight. Then we went with Emergency Repair Experts, so we get that additional heal. Concealment Experts, so we get a boost to our concealment. And then Fire Prevention, because there's going to be a ton of HE being slung at the ship, and this reduces our chance of catching a fire by 10%, and reduces the maximum number of fires on the ship from 4 to 3, which means we eat less damage when we are on fire. Well, 
because we can't get four fires. So therefore, less damage overall. All right, for the modules, we went with main armaments mod one to again keep the main battery guns in the fight. This gives the main battery guns a 20% boot uh, buff to their survivability, and I'm sorry, 50% 50, 50 buff to their main to their survivability, and a 20% buff to their chance of becoming incapacitated, and a 20% buff to their repair time. We're with Damage Con Mod 1, because fires suck, and this reduces the chance of us catching on fire by another 5%, and flooding by 3%. Emmy Systems Mod 1 to try and give that massive dispersion a bit of a, a leash, so it gives a 7% uh, buff to that dispersion, and we'll see what that did here in a second. Damage Con 2, because again, fires suck. This gives us a 15% buff to our fire recovering time and flooding recovering time as well. Another Concealment System Mod 1, that gives us another 10% buff to our ship's uh, concealment. And then Main Battery Mod 3, which gives us a 12% buff to our main battery reload time. So this now means that, oh, not Yuzhan, the ship. The guns now reload in 26 seconds base before adrenaline rush kicks in that's with 12 of republic's guns and the dispersion is down to 304 meters which still sounds pretty bad but we'll see we'll see we'll see the turrets reach, uh, rotate in 33.1 seconds now as well which is definitely just fine um for the ship's concealment we are now down to 14 kilometers which is pretty funny thinking a ship this large has a 14 kilometer detection range and with the speed flag on the ship now goes 32.6 knots and we can get a 15 percent buff to that with our engine boost being active and i believe that is it so guys we'll go ahead and take the pottery into battle i'll meet you guys there with a voiceover review of this ship hey guys voiceover mountbatten here and well i am presently surprised the Patri is the first of the super battleships to not have any type of gimmick to go along with it in terms of the com uh, specialized combat instructions or whatever you call them. The Satsuma, for example, has the ability once you get the bar built up to press F and simply get <laughs> the 30% buff to its dispersion for a salvo or two. The Hanover has the ability, after a couple of salvos, to press F and get 14 kilometer secondaries. Both things that go well with their class and their nation's flavor for that tech line. You know, Satsuma, the Japanese battleship, especially when you start getting up to higher tier, are snipers, so it makes sense that their ship has the ability to be basically be a super sniper for a couple of salvos. The Hanover, the well, it's really funny too. The German battleships have kind of had an identity shift to where they're more of main battery build, quick reload time on somewhat meh dispersion for their with their main battery guns but of course before that they were secondary build ships and you can still run a secondary build ship today and they do decently well as that especially when striking up to the higher tier ships but anyway secondaries are definitely a thing of the german tech tree battleship and battle cruiser tech tree and the handover has the ability to have some really darn good secondaries with the press of a button but when it came to the pot tree they didn't really need it. It was very odd that they had the idea that it's going to quadruple the HE pen on the ship. Which doesn't really fit in the French battleship tech line idea, um, identity at all. Because the French battleships are battleships that have the, the um, French armor scheme so you know it's coded in 32 has you know the the uh, space armor as I like to call it where it's sometimes you know you'll, you'll, you'll shoot the ship where you think you'll citadel it and you just get a torpedo protection hit or a pin that does mediocre damage or you shoot it in slightly a uh, slightly different angle and then you get 15 citadels or something like that and they're they're fast they have the engine boost which the potry does have and their main battery guns, you know, quad turrets are their things, and this is very much a quad turret. Battleship, as you can see, as we've talked about in port, it does have a large number of guns for its tier, which is kind of the French line thing. Then you get the Republic with eight guns at tier 10, but they're quad turrets. It's, Republic's a weird ship, and it would be surprised me if, the, if it's the next one to get replaced with a more, um, how do they word it? A ship that flowed with the line better. Because you go from like the Alsace, Alsace with its 
12 guns and quad turrets like okay we're going to get an all say all saw us at tier 10 with you know maybe 16 guns something like that and then you know you get a super speed but anyway this does definitely feel like a more proper tier 10 if you will if it wasn't 17 and a half inches or maybe it could still be 17 and a half inches maybe with a shortened range or longer uh, reload time this probably could very well be the tier 10 uh, french battleship it flows that well and and the weird thing is it doesn't really feel like a super ship because you don't have any of those gimmicks or auto loaders going for you but it's still good it's a more enjoyable republic in my mind now i'm not saying i hate the republic but like I said, it's just very jarring and it doesn't really flow well with the tech tree. It doesn't really make sense that this is the tier 10. This feels, again, more like a proper tier 10 tech line ship than the Republic. You know, maybe they could shave the health down a little bit. Um, maybe give it a little bit longer reload time. Maybe 16 inch guns. You could do this ship with 16 inch guns in the tier 10 spot and it would work quite well because the way the ship is set up, it, it doesn't need that gimmick to really set it apart. Now, None of the other super ships really need the gimmick to set it apart, but it's just weird that this one doesn't have it, but yet it still works quite well. And from what I've heard about the Claw Switch too, the upcoming tier 10 German uh, super cruiser, it doesn't have the improved combat instructions or whatever it's called either. It's basically just a bigger Hindenburg. So yeah, it's kind of nice that they're making these super ships without the gimmicks so you don't have the stupid gimmicky thing where it's like, oh, I get a better reload or I get a better dispersion pattern or whatever because silly little combat instructions but besides that point the ship itself yes i am very surprised with it um i thought that with the armor scheme it was going to be much more painful to play it's not any more any less painful than the other french battleships to play when it comes to the armor armor performance of course if you run to you know like a, a harugamo or any of the he spammy light cruisers yeah, sure, you can easily get farmed down, but you do have a very large health pull going with you into battle with that 108,000 HP. And the ship is mighty fast too when you have the reload booster going, I'm sorry, when you have the engine booster going. You'll be going, you know, upwards of 36, 37 knots if you sail in a straight line long enough for the ship to build up that much speed. It does handle very, very, very slowly. I mean, it, it is a super battleship. It is a massive ship. So she's really sluggish to turn, but in straight line, yeah, she can pretty easily get out of bad situations if you have that engine boost on standby the guns are awesome i mean they're republic's guns i really like republic's guns they're 17 and a half inch so they're not overmatching to the same extent as the obviously the 457s or the 18 inch and above guns but they're still quite a bit so they, they they can overmatch there's plenty of cruisers that they, that that, uh, that they can bite into now especially with the addition of more and more of these super and large cruisers so Again, while they're not 18 inch, they're pretty darn good in that aspect as well. The dispersion, for having 300 and something meters of dispersion, it really doesn't feel like it. Of course, having 12 guns does very much help <laughs> to conceal that fact. And the fact that you can, of course, get a 26 second reload time with a module is very nice too. And then the way the ship does eat damage with the 32 millimeters of armor absolutely everywhere, um, you are going to have a very fast reload very quickly in this ship. And that's great. And it gets a little nutty because this is 12 of our public's guns. And you get down to darn near 21, 22 seconds. Uh, again, with Jean here that I'm running with the improved adrenaline rush skill, you get that reload down very, very fast. And of course, the 12 guns too. You're pretty good for chunking ships at almost any angle. If something's bow into you and you can't overmatch their, their uh, bow armor, so like a battleship or something, just aim for their superstructure, you easily cleave like 12 to 13k off of their ship. Something shows you broadside. This thing's a Citadel machine. I, I've, I've got like, I think every single match I've played in, in this ship, I got at least three or four Citadels. At least. Very, very easily in this ship. It's great. Anything shows you broadside, they're going to suffer quite badly. Unless you really get screwed by RNG. In that case, is of course, not much you can do about that anyway. But the guns feel really nice. It's very comfortable to use. And if the decision was either they give it combat instructions or have to nerf these guns, like make the dispersion any worse, I'm glad they just stuck with making the guns accurate and giving this ship, you know, a more solid identity rather than le leaning on a gimmick. I, I do very much like that. They went this direction of the pottery. Um, AA is actually pretty decent. I had quite a few AA games in the ship. AA games, like, quite a few CV games in the ship. Uh, last one was, was against an FDR, which that sucked. 
but it actually felt pretty good. Is it an A barge? No, but it does feel like definitely if you're with a friend, you can definitely make the CV uh, regret going after the two of you. But yes, the AA was pretty decent. Um, I do wish, one thing that I do wish is that this ship was a little bit more maneuverable. Because the, the French battleships, you know, they're all about speed, getting on a flank, running it down on that flank. Uh, the, the ship, I get it's a super ship, but man, that rudder response time feels like it takes six ever to get going. Again, I get it's a super ship, it's a massive ship, but it would just been a little bit more right in, right in that French battleship ideology if it was just a little bit more maneuverable. I, I know the French battleships aren't exactly turning on a dime, but for ships that are supposed to be fast and again running down a flank, just a little bit more maneuverability I think would have helped this ship a little bit more. That being said, of course, I still like it without the the uh, increased maneuverability that I'm suggesting it have. I'm just saying it would have been nice if, if it would have had that. But overall, I really like this ship. Uh, the, the range, the base range is great, which means you're free to put that reload module in there, giving you a 26 second reload time on 12 of Republic's 17 and a half inch guns. Then we're gonna have the French AP, hits hard as hell. The HE is quite good too, so when you do run those situations when those battleships go bow into, you're slowly up, up your HE. <laughs> you, you got 40, uh, uh, what is it, 38, 39, uh, 40 with a flag percent fire chance on these guns, which is crazy. I'm sorry, no, 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 it's 48 percent, freaking 48 percent on 12 guns. That's nuts with the 26 second reload time. So yeah, who cares if you can't overmatch 32? Just load HE. You're going to burn them down in, in no time with 12 guns that reload every 26 seconds with the module. So yeah, this is a ship that I think is probably one of the better super battleships at the moment. Granted, the Satsuma and the Hanover, I really like the Hanover. I haven't bought her yet because that's a lot of credits. <laughs> but I did pick up the Satsuma and I don't say this has to be my second favorite one after the Hanover now, in my opinion at least. I know that there's, a, there's only three and they're all quite good, like I said. So I guess calling it one of the better super battleships isn't saying much, but it's a good one. And I think if you do enjoy the French battleships, you'll probably enjoy playing this. Uh, that being said, too, this is a super ship. You do have to have, like, at least, like, a, a 2K or, like, a 1.8K base XP game to even think about making profit in this ship with modifiers. Without modifiers, of course, this ship is going to be a credit sink, as these super ships are designed, too. But if you do want to pick up one and you like the French battleships, yes, the pottery will do you just fine. Even has the carnival funnel on there that the um, uh, what, what is it? The the uh, super cruiser, the the not the cold bear. The cold bear is the one that explodes when you, when you look at the conda. It has the the carnival cruise ship funnel from the conda on there as well. So guys, let me know what you guys think about the pottery down below. Do you agree with me? Do you dis disagree with me? Have you played this ship much? Since uh, 11.9 was released, let me know in the comments down below. But let's buy two cents on the pottery, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I want to be to 40,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope we catch you guys in the next one.